Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. Here the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 2nd of October. India pays homage to Mahatma Gandhi on his 150th birth anniversary. Serial killer behind murders of minor boys arrested in Pakistan. An electoral body says avoid premature judgments on Afghan poll results. And now for all the details. India on Wednesday paid homage to iconic freedom movement leader Mahatma Gandhi on his 150th birth anniversary. Gandhi played a key role in India's fight for independence from British rule through a non-violent struggle. Indian President Ramnath Kovind on Wednesday led the nation in paying homage to iconic freedom movement leader Mahatma Gandhi at his memorial in New Delhi on his 150th birth anniversary. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi along with other leaders including President of India's main opposition Congress Party Sonia Gandhi and former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh also offered flowers at Rajkot, the resting place of Father of the Nation on the occasion. Along with the leaders, school children and the general public also assembled at the memorial to pay their respects to Gandhi. Globally, Mahatma Gandhi's birth anniversary is celebrated as the International Day of Non-Violence. Born on October 2, 1869 in Porbandar town of Gujarat, Mahatma Gandhi played a key role in India's fight for independence. He was assassinated on January 30, 1948, almost five months after he led India to freedom from British rule through a non-violent struggle in 1947. Meanwhile, Indian Embassy in Nepal's capital Kathmandu unveiled a statue of Mahatma Gandhi on his 150th birth anniversary. Indian Ambassador to Nepal Manjeev Singh Puri along with other dignitaries and guests paid homage to Gandhi. The unveiling program was followed by presentation of Vaishnav song or bhajans by the artists and students who enthralled the audience by their mesmerizing performances. India's Foreign Minister Subramaniam Jaishankar at a roundtable conversation hosted by a top American think tank in Washington DC on Tuesday said that India shares a historical relationship with Afghanistan but should not advance prescriptions at the moment on the efforts to bring peace in the war-torn country. India's Foreign Minister Subramaniam Jaishankar on Tuesday attended a roundtable conversation hosted by top American think tank Atlantic Council's South Asia Center in Washington, D.C. The discussion focused on the future of U.S.-India relations amidst a renewed Western focus on geopolitics and economic development in the region. Descriptions. Jaishankar during the session said that India shares a historical relationship with Afghanistan but should not advance prescriptions at the moment on the efforts to bring peace in the war torn country. India has a relationship with that country, with that society, which is historical. It'll, it was there, it will keep continuing, it will be in the future as well. Uh, but at this time, uh, you know, uh, it would not, you know, I, it doesn't make sense for me that India should advance prescriptions. Uh, I mean, India can have an approach. I mean, obviously, anybody's approach would be uh, who would not prefer a negotiated outcome. In response to a question from a former Afghan diplomat, Jashankar said, when we say Afghan owned, Afghan controlled and Afghan led, that for us is a serious statement. It's not a cliche. US President Donald Trump had earlier called off peace negotiations with the Taliban that sought to end America's 18-year war in Afghanistan after the militants admitted that they were behind a recent attack that killed a US soldier. Death toll due to incessant rainfall and floods in different parts of India's eastern Bihar province rose to 42 on Wednesday. Waterlogged streets and flooded residential areas in provincial capital Patna has left residents in a fit with a lack of electricity and clean water supply. 
Days of heavy rains which resulted in flooded streets and houses has brought life to a standstill in India's eastern Bihar province. Waterlogged streets and flooded residential areas in capital Patna city left residents in a fit with the lack of electricity and clean water supply on Wednesday. People waded through just high and waste deep flood water as rescue workers evacuated residents to safer locations and provided them with relief material. Officials said the debt toll due to incessant rainfall and floods in different parts of Bihar has risen to 42. Bhagalpur mein maine aapko bataya tha, divar ke girne se hua tha. Patna mein jo char death hain, wo ek auto par ped gir gaya tha usse. To ye total abhi tak jo humare figure kal shaam ke hain, wo bayalis hain. The National Disaster Response Force has so far rescued over 10,000 people from Patna, which has been reeling under floods since the last few days. The rescue teams have been rowing people across the flooded streets in inflated boats while the Indian Air Force helicopters are dropping relief material to the flood affected areas. In is from Pakistan, Chief Minister of Pakistan's Punjab, Usman Buzdar, on Tuesday announced that the serial killer behind the rape and murders of four minor boys in Kasur district has been identified. The cases have highlighted the continued prevalence of child sexual abuse in Pakistan. Chief Minister of Pakistan's Punjab province, Usman Buzdar, on Tuesday announced that the serial killer behind the rape and murders of four minor boys in Kasur district has been identified. The Chief Minister confirmed that the 27-year-old accused had been identified after using polygraphic and DNA testing and he was behind all four cases of sodomy and murder. The four children, aged between 8 and 12 years, had gone missing since June, with the latest 8-year-old Fezan disappearing on the night of September 16. The remains of three children were found on September 17 from sand dunes near Chunyam Bypass. The case will be pursued in an anti-terrorism court, the minister said. Child advocates say Pakistan has a serious problem with child abuse with more than 3,800 cases of sexual abuse and violence reported against children in 2018. Moving on, locals in Gilgit, Baltistan, who lost their lands after they were acquired by the Pakistani government for developmental works, including for Gilgit Airport, have still not got any compensation. They have blamed their demands have been completely ignored by the chief minister of the illegally occupied region. A group of locals in Gilgit, Baltistan have claimed they haven't received the compensation yet for the lands that were acquired by the Pakistani government in the name of development decades ago. Even though acquisition took place in 1949, people are yet to be compensated for their properties including that for building the Gilgit airport. They have blamed Gilgit, Baltistan Chief Minister Hafiz Ur Rahman for ignoring their demands despite several protests. The issue comes into focus during every election and every time they are handed empty promises of compensation. Where I understand that my feeling is that he is a leader of Hafiz Rahman. He understands that he can't get any other person in my situation in this situation. If he comes here, he will get a million dollars or he will get an alternate land. So in this situation, he can get another person in the city of the city. Scores of tourists visit Gilgit, Baltistan every year and the airport is the single major connectivity point to the illegally occupied region. Islamabad has made billions of rupees because of the airport but has deprived those who sacrifice their land and possessions during the construction. In news from Afghanistan, Independent Electoral Complaints Commission of Afghanistan has rebuked the candidates from making premature judgments on presidential poll results. The election body has said that premature claims about the election process could damage the trust of Afghan public. Independent Electoral Complaints Commission or IECC in Afghanistan has rebuked candidates for making premature judgments on presidential poll results. The officials from the election body on Tuesday said the candidates claiming victory early will be violating the election law of the country. They further asserted 
that premature claims about the election process could damage the trust of the public. This came a day after Chief Executive Abdullah Abdullah, who has been a three-time presidential contender, said his team will form the next government as they have received the highest number of votes. In response, Amrullah Saleh, the running mate of incumbent Afghan president, Ashraf Ghani also asserted that Ghani had won a clear victory in the country's presidential elections. Election bodies in Afghanistan are still gathering votes from September 28th's poll. If no candidate wins more than half, a runoff vote would be held between the top two candidates. And he's from Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka's Foreign Secretary Ravinatha Arisena told the UN General Assembly earlier this week that the Easter Sunday attacks have taught Sri Lanka that fighting terrorism must go hand in hand with protecting human rights. Sri Lanka's Foreign Secretary Ravinatha Arisena said at the United Nations that the events of the Easter Sunday bombings have taught Sri Lanka that fighting terrorism must go hand in hand with protecting human rights. Addressing the 74th session of the UN General Assembly in New York, the leader of the Sri Lankan delegation said that the very delicate balance between fighting terrorism and protecting human rights has often been elusive with states, veering towards one extreme or the other. He said Sri Lanka as a nation faced the task of recovery over the past five months and it also demanded that we be resolute in governance. Our institutions asserted themselves, each in their role to ensure the people, communities and societies as a whole were able to feel safe again. In fact, the post-Easter Sunday attack period has proved to be a litmus test on Sri Lanka's resolve to adhere to human rights standards while fighting terrorism. Multiple blasts ripped through Sri Lanka on April 21 when the Christian community was celebrating Easter Sunday. The explosions rattled churches and high-end hotels, killing more than 250 people. A local jihadi group and ISIS affiliate, National Tawheed Jamaat, claimed responsibility for the devastating attacks, which have been widely condemned. Local authorities in India's Jammu and Kashmir have organized a cocoon auction in Srinagar city for the benefit of the growers. The month-long market is set up annually to help growers sell their cocoons at competitive rates to buyers from within and from outside the region. The Sericulture Development Authority in Srinagar city of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir has organized an annual cocoon auction to facilitate local growers. The one-month-long auction being held at the Sericulture Department headquarters aims to boost business of the famed Kashmiri silk as well as to attract more people towards cocoon production. This cocoon auction market is set up annually, enabling growers to sell their cocoons at competitive rates to the buyers from within and from outside the region. हम भी यही कोशिश कर रहे हैं कि जमींदारों को कम से कम फायदा होना चाहिए क्योंकि अगले साल ये और इसमें दिलचस्पी दे डिपार्टमेंट का भी जो डिपेंड है वो जमींदारों पर होता है जो ये बनाते हैं ये नहीं बनाएंगे जब हमको हौसला अफजाई नहीं करेंगे तो ये क्या बनाएंगे तो हमारे यहां ये लोकल व्यापारी होते हैं बाकी बंगाल से आते हैं व्यापारी तो इसका ये मार्केट शुरू हो गया है हम भी September and October are the only two months where the growers in Jammu and Kashmir prepare their cocoons for sale. Over 4,000 families in Kashmir Valley are engaged in cocoon production. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. India pays homage to Mahatma Gandhi on his 150th birth anniversary. Serial killer behind murders of minor boys arrested in Pakistan. And electoral body says avoid premature judgments on Afghan poll results. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline.com. 
That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.